This solar install has cost us thousands and it's not even our fault. So today I'm here to prove it. So a year and a half ago, we fitted these 62 solar panels on this tennis court. And it was a super proud moment for us. A big install providing tons of power for our customer, but there's been a problem massive voltage fluctuations. When I say voltage fluctuations, what do I mean? Well, basically in summer, when this system is pumping out a ton of power, the voltage has been spiking to over 260 volts on the AC side. But then in winter, as we charge the batteries, it's been dropping right down to 220 volts. And this is creating big problems for our customer. Now we first discovered the voltage issues when it came to charging the customer's car. We installed a pen fault protection device which works off voltage and is designed to trip out when the system gets to over 252 volts. That's to protect from protective earth neutral faults which generally would cause the voltage to spike. However, in this case, the natural voltage spike coming from the generation caused the pen fault device to trip out, meaning that the customer couldn't charge their car. Now this is a big system with three inverters totaling 17 kilowatts of potential solar output and three big solar edge DC coupled batteries. The system can churn out a lot of power, but we did get G99 approval for full 17 kilowatt export to the grid. So clearly the DNO did their calculations and checked that the local grid could support this kind of system, right? Well, we contacted the DNO about this voltage issue because we just felt that it wasn't quite right. Maybe the base voltage on the grid was too high. Now we did some readings ourselves and the base voltage was around 240 volts, which is fairly high. And obviously when you add to that, the increased voltage from the solar PV system starts to get significant. But what did UK Power Networks say? Well, they said that they could come out and connect a voltage monitoring device but and here's the catch we would have to turn off the solar pv system while they were doing their monitoring now for me that's completely insane because the whole point is that we've connected a pv system which they said we could do and the pv system is affecting the grid voltage if they were to just connect their voltage monitoring device during normal conditions with no pv connected they'll just find that the grid voltage is 240 volts and they'll say it's fine so that put us in a bit of a tricky situation. We asked the customer if they'd be happy for us to turn off the solar PV system for a couple of weeks while the DNO did their tests. And understandably, the customer said no, they didn't want to lose out on all of that generated power that they'd paid to get a beautiful solar system to generate. So that meant we had to take matters into our own hands. And we did this. This is a voltage optimizer. Now, if you've watched the channel before, you'll know that I hate voltage optimizers. I think they're a bit of a scam. And yet we have paid out of our own pocket to install this one for our customer. Why? Well, basically because we didn't really have much other choice. That spike of 260 volts is just not acceptable when the solar is running. We needed to do something to get the base voltage down so that the system would float up and down but stay within the voltage norms that are required in order to charge an EV and do all of the other things that you need to do in your house safely. So we fitted this, this voltage optimizer at our own cost, which cost us thousands of pounds by the time we bought the thing and put the time and effort into fitting it but it's still not solved the problem. I'll explain that to you in a bit, but first let me explain how this works and what effect it has had so far. Welcome to the inner workings of a huge voltage optimizer. So this is effectively a giant transformer, right? This big lump here, is a copper winding and we run the entire power for the whole house through this transformer. And what it does is steps the voltage down by a certain percentage. So we've got our incoming tails from the meter coming into this main switch. Out of the main switch it goes through this winding. It is tapped off in three different places so we've got three different options. The first option they call low saving it drops the voltage by about 6%. The, the second option, medium saving, it drops the voltage by 8%. And the third option here drops the voltage 
by about 10%. Now we decided to start small and drop things down by about 6%. So we come out of that first tapping. And then from there it goes to the main house consumer unit and all of the electrics, including the solar PV system. Now just a little side point here. You can see how much power this house is drawing using this clamp meter. So we're currently drawing 4.7 amps, which is not a huge amount, to be honest. Um, it's pretty low. But this property does use a huge amount of power at certain times of the day. They've got a lot of electric heating. The customer says that some days they're burning through their 30 kilowatt hours of battery storage by 8 or 9 a.m. Uh, they could even do with more battery storage potentially, but there's an issue there too. But the question is what effect has this had and did it do what we wanted it to do? Hey guys, I just want to take 60 seconds to tell you about something super exciting that I've been working on. I have personally co-founded a company called OpenQuote. It's a software tool that enables your customers to give you the information that you need in order to provide a quick and easy quote. It's a bit like a virtual site survey tool, saving you from having to go out to site and giving you all of the information that you need to provide an accurate bespoke quote quickly for your clients. Now we've just launched a full user interface update. It looks beautiful and I'd love to get your feedback on it. There's a link below where you can find out more and sign up for a free trial. So just to explain what's been happening, here's a chart of the voltage before we fitted the voltage optimizer and this is in summer. And you can see that during the day when the sun comes up, the voltage spikes up to around 260 volts. Then it goes back down to its sort of baseline of around 240, 245 volts during the night when there's no solar generation. And it just basically spikes up every day during that solar generation. Now the issue with that was that when the customer wanted to charge their car during that peak solar generation time, the pen fault device was tripping out and they couldn't charge the car and make use of that solar generation, which was really frustrating. So on the 15th of November, we fitted the voltage optimizer and you can see the difference it's made here. So this was the 14th of November. Uh, the voltage was baseline around 240 volts. And then right here about lunchtime on the 15th of November, when Lee fitted the voltage optimizer, it dropped down and the baseline suddenly became about 225 volts. So we reduced our baseline down, which is great, but there's another problem that we didn't think about. And that's when it comes to charging the batteries. Now the whole point of having a large battery storage system like this is that in the winter when you're not generating so much solar power, you can charge them up overnight on the cheap electricity, basically force charge them, and then use that cheap energy to run your house throughout the day. And that's exactly what our customers have been doing. So at around midnight, these batteries get ramped up to charge at about 17 kilowatts, basically full pelt charge the batteries up and after a few hours they're fully charged. However, that huge spike in load has caused a voltage drop where basically, and this is how Ohm's law works, when you pull more power the voltage goes down. And so now that our base voltage is lower, we're getting a voltage drop when these batteries are charging, as you can see from this chart here, it's dropping to around 205 volts, which is just too low. Now, I think the problem lies in the DNO transformer. What is that? Basically, all the mains transition power in the UK comes from high voltage lines, usually 11,000 volts, and then they have a transformer somewhere near your house, which steps it down to what should be 230 volts. Now that is what we call the nominal voltage in the UK. That's basically what the baseline voltage should be at most properties. Now the DNO allows for a certain tolerance of plus 10% and minus 6%, which means that the maximum voltage can be 253 or as low as 216.2 volts. That's what they deem to be an acceptable range. So the fact that at this property, the baseline voltage was around 240 volts under normal conditions, well, they're gonna say that that's acceptable. However, with the solar pushing it up to 260 volts, it comes outside of that norm. And the question is for me, whose responsibility is that? Is it the DNO? Because they've allowed us to connect this generating set to the grid 
or is it our responsibility or the customer's responsibility? Let me know what you think in the comments below. But going back to this point of the transformer, what that basically is, is a big version of what we've seen in the meter box there. It's basically a coil of copper like this uh, next to another coil like that. And 11 kV comes in here and 230 volts comes out here. But transformers can be rated at different sizes. And the size of the transformer, for example, if it's a 70 kVA transformer, it can basically allow like 70 kilowatts uh, to pass through it. The problem with that is that if you're pulling more than 70 kilowatts or you're generating more and pushing more back, it's gonna restrict the flow through the transformer. And what you get is the voltage starts to float because it can't push enough through the transformer. And I think that's a problem that we've got here. Now, I've got a lot of respect for UK Power Networks. They've been very helpful with us in the past on various things, but in this particular case, they've been absolutely useless. So I, I'm taking things into my own hands and I'm gonna see if I can find the local transformer and figure out what the problem is. Now, in order to find the transformer, we need to basically trace the cables from the house back to wherever they go. There is an underground supply to this house, but I believe that it comes up this pole over here. So we're gonna follow the cables overhead and eventually we should find a transformer, usually mounted on a pole or something like that, and we'll see whether it's in good condition or not. So this is the nearest electricity pole, and I can see it's got a label on there that says it's an electricity pole. On the back of it, there's a plastic capping that runs down where the cable comes down from the overhead lines and goes underground, and presumably that's the cable that goes to feed our customer's house. Now from up there, it splits off to the neighbor's house and then it goes both ways up and down the street. So it's 50-50 which way the transformer's gonna be. Uh, but let's go this way and see what we can find. Yes. Oh my goodness, look at that. Ha! Oh my goodness, it's completely overgrown. That is crazy. Right, so this is exactly what I'm talking about, guys. So that's the cable that comes up the road and then it goes across the road. I mean, all the poles here are completely overgrown, to be honest, the state of the network is pretty poor here. And we've walked about, I don't know, how many meters have we walked? Probably about 300 meters from the customer's house to get to here. There's quite a long cable run overhead. And if we clamber up here, you'll see the transformer on some crunky old poles, completely overgrown. <laughs> Well, that explains a lot, and I feel a bit relieved, to be honest, because I thought I was going nuts on this project. But to be honest, the fact that the transformer is so far away, it looks fairly small, and it's in a pretty shocking state, explains this whole problem, and gives me ammo to take to UK Power Networks to say, hey guys, please, can you help us out? Can you just upgrade your transformer? Because I know that a lot of the neighbors in this area would like to get solar too, but that ain't happening until that transformer gets upgraded. Now our customer's house is here, the supply transformer is over there, but that overhead line carries on further and further down the road and I'm wondering what kind of voltage issues the neighbours have experienced all the way down at the end of the line. Now in order to come to UK Power Networks and get them to take some action, we're going to need some evidence. So we've decided to bring out the big guns. This is the Chauvin Arnu Pell 103. We've used this in a previous video and it's a power and energy logger. And this will give us all of the data that we need to send to UK Power Networks and then beg them to do something about their shoddy transformer. So this thing is absolute beast. And we've used it in a previous video to basically monitor and measure the maximum demand at a property to find out whether we've got capacity to install EV chargers. Uh, but in this case, we're gonna mainly be using it to read the voltage, but it will give us loads of other things like the current readings, the power factor, basically all of the power data that you would need about a property. So these are basically flexible CTs. We're gonna just wrap that around our incoming main tails. Then we've got these little vo voltage probes. Now, the cool thing about these is they're magnetic. So they actually magnetize onto a terminal. You can just stick them onto existing terminals without having to undo conductors. And the other end is going to go in here. So now we've got our line and our neutral. 
and they're just going to pop on to our terminals here. Our power energy logger is in place, logging away, and soon we'll have the results to send to UKPN. Comment below part two if you'd like to see an update on all of the results. And why not watch this video here where we had to rip out the EV charger at this property.